Greetings. My name is Miss Afton and I am the Children's Librarian at the Alexander Hamilton Library and we are very excited to welcome you to a brand new story time program for our summer reading program this year. So our new program is called Our World of Stories and the idea is that our world is filled with basically an uncountable amount of stories. The neat thing and what we're going to celebrate with this series is that a lot of those stories share common themes or ideas. So we got inspiration for this story time from an index that was created beginning in the beginning of the 20th century and it's kind of evolved over time, but it's called the Arne Thompson Uther Index. And what it does is it looks at stories from all around the world. So scholars examine the stories and they pick out the different themes that are present in the stories and they classify them. So there might be some classifications that are really general. So things like animals or talking animals, pretty broad. You can see how lots of stories fit into that category. There are also some that get very, very specific. So there are some like magic shoes or does the shoe fit? So today we are going to be exploring with our very first Our World of Stories series. We're going to be looking at the story of Cinderella. Now Cinderella is a really cool example and we'll actually be reading a couple more of these Cinderella stories throughout the summer because scholars can't agree but they guess that there may be up to over 3,000 different stories about Cinderella around the world. So her name might not always be Cinderella, but the bones of the story are still the same, which is pretty cool. So today we're going to start, and each week we're going to start with a quick recap of the story as we know it in the United States. So Cinderella became pretty popular when Disney made the cartoon movie in 1950. And so the story as we typically tell it is there's a girl named Ella or Cinderella whose father dies and she's left to live with her mean stepmother and stepsisters. So they give Cinderella all of the work to do and her life is pretty bleak until one day the king announces a royal proclamation that everyone is to come to the palace for a ball because the prince is ready to get married. So Cinderella is excited to go too, but of course, as we know, her stepmother and stepsisters ruin her chance of going until her fairy godmother shows up. So her fairy godmother rewards Cinderella for being so kind and generous, even though her life is so hard, by transforming her to have a beautiful dress, a carriage, footmen, and some very cool footwear, so glass slippers. Now, Cinderella is able to go to the ball, and when she's there, the prince sees her and instantly falls in love, and they dance the night away, but, According to the fairy godmother's instructions, Cinderella has to be home by the last strike of midnight on the clock. So at, when she starts to hear the clock at the end of the party, she runs away, losing one of her glass slippers at the palace. And so the prince vows that he will only marry the woman whose foot fits in the glass slipper. So he searches for the entire through the entire kingdom until he finally comes to Cinderella's house, where her stepsisters and stepmother once again try to ruin her chances with the prince. But as I think any good fairy tale does, it ends happily with Cinderella and the prince being reunited and Cinderella pulls out the matching glass slipper and they live happily ever after. So that is the story as we tell it, for the most part, in the United States. But like I said, there are tons of different versions of this story around the world. So today we're going to check out one that's a pretty classic variation as well from China. So we need to get some more atmosphere in here. If we're going to be telling a story about China, we need to pretend to travel to China. So let's get ready. Ah, there we go. All right, so for our story today, we are going to be reading Ye Shen. Now Ye Shen is a Cinderella story from China. So that is Cinderella's name in China. Right. And this version of Ye Shen is actually one of our library books, so you can check this out from our curbside pickup. This version is retold by Ai Ling Lui, 
and it's illustrated by Ed Young. This version was also published by Philomel Books. So we have Yeshen, and you can see it's actually starting with some Hansu, which is the writing system for China. So in the dim past, even before the Qin and the Han dynasties, there lived a cave chief of southern China by the name of Wu. As was the custom in those days, Chief Wu had taken two wives. Each wife in her turn had presented Wu with a baby daughter, but one of the wives sickened and died, and not too many days after that, Chief Wu took to his bed and died too. Ye Shen, the little orphan, grew to girlhood in her stepmother's home. She was a bright child and lovely too, with skin as smooth as ivory and dark pools for eyes. Her stepmother was jealous of all this beauty and goodness, for her own daughter was not pretty at all. So in her displeasure, she gave poor Ye Shen the heaviest and most unpleasant chores. The only friend that Ye Shen had to her name was a fish she had caught and raised. It was a beautiful fish with golden eyes, and every day it would come out of the water and rest its head on the bank of the pond, waiting for Yashen to feed it. Stepmother gave Yashen little enough food for herself, but the orphan child always found something to share with her fish, which grew to enormous size. Somehow the stepmother heard of this. She was terribly angry to discover that Yashen had kept a secret from her, so she hurried down to the pond, but she was unable to see the fish, for Yev Shen's pet wisely hid itself. The stepmother, however, was a crafty woman, and she soon thought of a plan. She walked home and called out, Ye Shen, go and collect some firewood. But wait, the neighbors might see you. Leave your filthy coat here. The minute the girl was out of sight, her stepmother slipped on the coat herself and went down again to the pond. This time, the big fish saw Yashen's familiar jacket and heaved itself onto the bank, expecting to be fed. But the stepmother, having hidden a dagger in her sleeve, stabbed the fish, wrapped it in her garments, and took it home to cook for dinner. When Yashen came to the pond that evening, she found her pet had disappeared. Overcome with grief, the girl collapsed on the ground and dropped her tears into the still waters of the pond. Ah, poor child, a voice said. Yashen sat up to find a very old man looking down at her. He wore the coarsest of clothes and his hair flowed down over his shoulders. Kind uncle, who may you be? Yashen asked. That is not important, my child. All you must know is that I have been sent to tell you of the wondrous powers of your fish. My fish? But sir... The girl's eyes filled with tears and she could not go on. The old man sighed and said, Yes, my child, your fish is no longer alive, and I must tell you that your stepmother is once more the cause of your sorrow. Yashen gasped in horror, but the old man went on. Let us not dwell on things that are past, he said, for I have come bringing you a gift. Now you must listen carefully to this. The bones of your fish are filled with a powerful spirit. Whenever you are in serious need, you must kneel before them and let them know your heart's desire. But do not waste their gifts. Yashen wanted to ask the old man many more questions, but he rose to the sky before she could utter another word. With heavy heart, Yashen made her way to the dung heap to gather the remains of her friend. Time went by, and Ye Shen, who was often left alone, took comfort in speaking to the bones of her fish. When she was hungry, which happened quite often, Ye Shen asked the bones for food. In this way, Ye Shen managed to live from day to day, but she lived in dread that her stepmother would discover her secret and take even that away from her. So the time passed and spring came. Festival time was approaching. It was the busiest time of the year. Such cooking and cleaning and sewing there was to be done. Ye Shen had hardly a moment's rest. At the spring festival, young men and young women from the village hoped to meet and choose whom they would marry. 
Hao Yishen longed to go, but her stepmother had other plans. She hoped to find a husband for her own daughter and did not want any man to see the beauteous Ye Shen first. Stepmother. When finally the holiday arrived, the stepmother and her daughter dressed themselves in finery and filled their baskets with sweets. You must remain home now and watch to see that no one steals fruit from our trees, her stepmother told Ye Shen, and then she departed for the banquet with her own daughter. As soon as she was alone, Ye Shen went to speak to the bones of her fish. Oh dear, she said, kneeling before the precious bones. I long to go to the festival, but I cannot show myself in these rags. Is there somewhere I could borrow clothes fit to wear to the feast? At once, she found herself dressed in a gown of azure blue with a cloak of kingfisher feathers draped around her shoulders. Best of all, on her tiny feet were the most beautiful slippers she had ever seen. They were woven of gold threads in a pattern like the scales of a fish, and the glistening soles were made of solid gold. There was magic in the shoes, for they should have been quite heavy. Yet when Ye Shen walked, her feet felt light as air. Be sure you do not lose your golden shoes, said the spirit of the bones. Ye Shen promised to be careful. Delighted with her transformation, she bid a fond farewell to the bones of her fish as she slipped off to join in the merrymaking. That day, Yeshen turned many ahead as she appeared at the feast. All around her, people whispered, Look at that beautiful girl. Who can she be? But above this, stepsister was heard to say, Mother, does she not resemble our Ye Shen? Upon hearing this, Ye Shen jumped up and ran off before her stepsister could look more closely at her. She raced down the mountainside, and in doing so, she lost one of her golden slippers. No sooner had the shoe fallen from her foot than all her fine clothes turned back to rags. Only one thing remained, a tiny golden shoe. Yeshen hurried to the bones of her fish and returned the slipper, promising to find its mate. But now the bones were silent. Sadly, Yeshen realized that she had lost her only friend. She hid the little shoe in her bed straw and went outside to cry. Leaning against a fruit tree, she sobbed and sobbed until she fell asleep. The stepmother left the gathering to check on Yeshen. But when she returned home, she found the girl sound asleep with her arms wrapped around a fruit tree. So thinking no more of her, the stepmother rejoined the party. Meantime, a villager had found the shoe. Recognizing its worth, he sold it to a merchant who presented it in turn to the king of the island kingdom of Tohan. The king was more than happy to accept the slipper as a gift. He was entranced by the tiny thing, which was shaped of the most precious metals yet which made no sound when touched to stone. The more he marveled at its beauty, the more determined he became to find the woman to whom the shoe belonged. A search was begun among the ladies of his own kingdom, but all who tried on the sandal found it impossibly small. Undaunted, the king ordered the search widened to include the cave women from the countryside where the slipper had been found. Since he realized it would take many years to find the woman, or for the woman to come to his island and test her foot in the slippers, the king thought of a way to get the right woman to come forward. He ordered the sandal placed in a pavilion by the side of the road near where it had been found, and his herald announced that the shoe was to be returned to its original owner. Then from a nearby hiding place, the king and his men settled down to watch and wait for a woman with tiny feet to come and claim her slipper. All that day, the pavilion was crowded with cave women who had come to test a foot in the shoe. Ye Shen's stepmother and stepsister were among them, but not Ye Shen. They had told her to stay home. By day's end, although many women had eagerly tried to put on the slipper, it still had not been worn. Wearily, the king continued, continued his vigil into the night. It wasn't until the blackest part of the night, while the moon hid behind a cloud, that Ye Shen dared to show her face at the pavilion. And even then, she tiptoed timidly across the wide floor. 
Slinking or sinking down to her knees, the girl in rags examined the tiny shoe. Only when she was sure that it was the missing mate to her own golden slipper did she dare pick it up. At last, she could return both little shoes to the fish bones. Surely then, her beloved spirit would speak to her again. Now, the king's first thought on seeing Yeshen take the precious slipper was to throw the girl as a prison, into prison as a thief. But when she turned to leave, he caught a glimpse of her face. At once, the king was struck by the sweet harmony of her features, which seemed so out of keeping with the rag she wore. It was then that he took a closer look and noticed that she walked upon the tiniest feet he had ever seen. With a wave of his hand, the king signaled that this tattered creature was to be allowed to depart with the golden slipper. Quietly, the king's men slipped off and followed her home. All this time, Ye Shen was unaware of the excitement she had caused. She had made her way home and was about to hide both sandals in her bedding when there was a pounding at the door. Ye Shen went to see who it was and found a king at her doorstep. She was very frightened at first, but the king spoke to her in a kind voice and asked her to try the golden slippers on her feet. The maiden did as she was told, and as she stood in her golden shoes, her rags were transformed once more into the feathered cloak and beautiful azure gown. Her loveliness made her seem a heavenly being, and the king suddenly knew in his heart that he had found his true love. Not long after this, Ye Shen was married to the king, but fate was not so gentle with her stepmother and stepsister. Since they had been unkind to his beloved, the king would not permit Ye Shen to bring them to his palace. They remained in their cave home, where one day, it is said, they were crushed to death in a, sh in a shower of flying stones. And that is the story of Ye Shen a Cinderella story from China. So in this story, there were some things that were really similar to Cinderella as we tell it here in the United States, but there were also some things that were really different. So each week, we're going to be giving you a question or a challenge to complete to earn a secret code that will give you 30 extra bonus points for our summer reading program. Now, if you haven't signed up for the summer reading program, we recommend it. It's free and it's a great way to enter to earn prizes as you read this summer. You can find more information at reading.ahmfl.org. And once you're part of the summer reading program, you can answer today's challenge to win 30 bonus points. So you'll get a code that you can enter. So our challenge today is this, right? There are lots of things that are very different about Cinderella in the United States and Ye Shen, Cinderella in China. So in the comments, share some of the things that you noticed as being different. Now, it might be about where Ye Shen lived. It could be about the fairy godmother. It could be my favorite thing, which is how the story ends with the stepmother and stepsister. Ooh. But whatever it is that you notice that's different, share a couple of those things in the comments and you'll receive by private message our secret code for today's story. So we hope that you enjoyed our first our World of Stories feature. Join us next week as we travel to a different country with a different story. So thanks for listening.